Well, hello, good day, good to see everybody. I'm finally back here with the review uh, in the, what is it, September 27th. Been a while, but, uh, you know, Review World has been a little on the uh, slow side because, I mean, it seems like with every, even, even all the reviewers that I like, it's a lot of the same old, same old. I don't know if anybody else has noticed this, but I have. To where it's like, okay, here's another RBA, you know, a new drippable type RBA. Um, where is my RBA? There it is. And it's like all the same thing. It's just different types and styles. Okay, well, we've kind of seen two to five to ten. You've kind of seen them all for the most part. You know, maybe some differences here and there. Or it's like something that's just insane where you're building dual coils and the price is $295 for the thing. And it's like, then once you, if you were lucky enough that you can just blow 300 bucks on a little device to screw on the end of it that's not just 12 bucks, you put it on the end of it and then you got to go through the work of building dual coils and not crossing things and doing all this particular little stuff. And if you're a handy guy, you know, you're good with your hands, you're going to have fun with that if you, once again, can afford the $300 and justify that. And, uh, but I, I, uh, I need propane. I need propane because it's getting cold here in South Dakota. The fall is among us, amongst us, whatever. It's approaching and I gotta have heat, otherwise the wife might get upset. And if anybody out there is married to a woman, you know that's not good. <laughs> anyway, vaping on a old, well it's not old, this is actually brand new, it's a little starter thing called the G-Hit, which we're not here to talk about, but it vapes great. It's just a 3.7, much like the standard Ego, and a nice little small device, kind of going old school. However, if I was truly going old school, I would have a cartridge and an atomizer here, which I don't, it comes with a kind of like a cross between a iClear 16 and Vivinova maybe, but you can't take it apart. I don't know. I don't know if the company wants me to review this or not. They wanted me to give them my ideas and my thoughts on it, which I have done. And uh, But it's cool, man. It's got this cool little light. See that? Ooh, kind of like the uh, eye taste. Mm -hmm. If I would have had this when I very first started would have been much better than what I actually very first started with I can tell you that but we're not going to talk about that anymore we are here to talk about the VAMO version 3 now I'm going to have pictures floating in and out uh, of this thing I want I want to do it justice and you know I want to do a good review on this because I know the VAMO is a very very popular device because it's cheap and it's popular for good reason because it's a great device and the version 3 we all remember the version 2 which I have in front of me right here was a great device um, the only thing that a lot of people say about them is you know the buttons have their little rattle if you go like this but like I've said in my review if you don't go like this, then you don't have to worry about it. You know, whatever. Uh, but And the other thing that people say about it is it's big. It's so big. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to have pictures floating in and out comparing it to other devices. But I can tell you right now that version 3 is exactly the same size as the version 2. It is identical in height, width, all that good stuff. So where should we start with this? Well, how about prices? I've got it right here. I'm gonna give a plug. I didn't. I didn't buy it from this website, but I'm gonna give a plug to it. Um, it's called FastTech.com. F-A-S-T-T-E-C-H.com. Um, a uh, a user, a YouTube user, actually commented, uh, made a comment. I believe it was a comment to me saying, "Hey, you know." Uh, with money being an issue for some of us that have families, you know, we're not rich, but uh, we want to vape, we want to have the cool stuff, but, you know, just like the device that I was talking about earlier with the dual coil setup that uh, Phil Basardo just, I watched him review, yeah, outstanding vape if you can, A, build it, B, afford it. So there's just a lot of reviews like that going around, and I don't really get into that. I like to keep my channel probably a little bit more pertaining to the... Um, the more newbie vapors and the vapors that are maybe on a budget and uh, I, I think that that's what I'm always going to keep my reviews 
uh, geared towards. Anyway, this user com made a comment uh, after watching my, one of my videos saying, yeah, you know, if price is an issue for you, try FastTech.com. Uh, you have to get it overseas. So, you know, it's obviously a Chinese company, I'm sure. And, uh, but it is way cheaper, but you are going to wait for it. Um, you know, you might have to wait a couple of weeks to even three weeks for it to show up. If you go to FastTech.com, which I... Again, I did not buy my version 3 from FastTech.com. You can pick this up for $32.18, which is insane. That is an excellent price. I personally bought mine from my vapor store. I got it within two to three days or something like that. Um, and you can get this as a kit. You're going to have the option. So if you're a new vapor, you're just getting started, and you want to work your way up to something a little bit bigger than, say, the Ego type of uh, setup, uh, you want to step up to this variable vo uh, wattage, variable voltage, then it's a pretty sweet deal. It's um, myvaporstore.com. Um, uh, everybody who's been vaping has heard of My Vapor Store. They're a great website. There's, you know, like many great bad, wait, bad, 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 websites. You're looking at fifty-one dollars and sixty-five cents. So Fast Tech thirty-two eighteen. But my vapor store and most places, more more of the American regular stores, which I personally like to shop at the American stores because I feel good, you know, helping out my fellow American, my fellow Americans, and uh, you know, it's more of the mom pop type uh, operations or just a group of friends that started a website and got into vaping and said, you know what, we're going to quit our jobs and we're going to start vaping for a living, you know, and. Uh, so I, I, I'm willing to spend a little bit more to, to help support those uh, groups, especially when you're only spending 50 bucks on a mod. Take a drink. Mm. Little Starbucks. Uh, vanilla cream. Mm -mm -mm. So good. So 51.65. That's what you're going to get there. Um, yeah, and like I said, you can make it a kit. Uh, uh, you're just getting into this. You want to step up to this. You have the option to add 18350 batteries, the little short guys, and you can stack two 18350s at six volts in the Vamo version three. Um, and just for fun, here we are. <laughs> that is in the box, obviously in the box. That's what you get. There are no instructions, there is nothing, and it does come with an extra tube. Um, there'll be pictures of all this stuff floating in and out. And a uh, nice little cover here. Bamo version 3. Wait a minute. Oh. There are instructions. Let's just take a gander. But we're men. We don't read instructions. But I feel like, hey, you know, there's women out there too, and they do read instructions. They're smart. Vamo B3 user manual. Pretty short and sweet, nice writing. Um, tells you how to navigate around to everything. Variable voltage, variable power, or variable wattage. 3.0 volts to 6.0 volts on the voltage power. You uh, power slash wattage. 3 watts to 15 watts is what you're going to get, and that is in 0.5 plus minus you know watt uh, intervals, or it's 0.1 volts if you're going to use voltage so you can really fine-tune it. Chrome-plated brass tube section. And, uh, yeah, three buttons on the Vamo's body. Take a look at the image below. And let's just get right uh, right into it. Um, so, yeah, you're going to have instructions if you have any you know, problems, and they are very well-written and basic. Um, I love the Vamo. Everybody who has been following my reviews or checking me out. They should be checking me out. Anyway, I, I, I'm a big fan of the VAMO because of the, of the ease of use, you know. Getting back to the original VAMO, say, uh, oh, let me screw something on here of some sort. I don't even know what I'm screwing on here. It's Well, it's a Bibi Nova, but I don't know what the juice is. I think it might be knockoff Bobas. Is it on? going on? Do I have a bad tank here? I might. Yeah, it was on. I think something's up with this tank, man. Well, I guess it's nice to know. I will have to replace it. Let me try to screw it down a little bit more. Well, that's not very nice. 
Okay, fine. Let's try. I'm trying to look at my connection. I guess it looks okay. Oh, let's try this. I have no idea what I'm grabbing. I need to label my flavors better. There it is. So I'm going to have to check out that other tank. Mm. Little Copper Creek. My own homemade coil in this. What I like about the original Vamo, you know, everything's two button. Two buttons. I like, or, well, you got your fire button. Fire button, all it is responsible for is firing. That is it. And I'm a huge fan of the Vamo button itself. It's a good, solid, rugged metal button with a little turny action, you know. And keep in mind, this is the version 2. This is the other, uh, previous version of the Vamo. And it's also got, you know, the, the two buttons, just like the new one. The new one, as you can obviously tell and, and uh, see in the pictures, that um, it has the same setup, two buttons and this. But you'll see something very different right now, and you'll see in the, in the pictures. Um, sure, why don't you have your brother help you do that, please, because I'm recording. Thank you. You're a doll. Hey, Cameron, what? help your sister, would you please? She, um, talk to her about it. Ah, real time. Maybe I'll edit that out. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, the ease of use in the VAMO to me as compared to... Okay, I can already tell I'm going to have... Okay, I can already tell I'm going to have to stop recording and I'm going to have to help my daughter now because she's getting upset because her brother will not help her. I don't know how to set that stupid stuff off. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. And I'm back, and I uh, got her busy playing the Nintendo Wii, and uh, as you can plainly see, having children and having to do these reviews is very tough, because anytime I'm home, I gotta watch the kids, and I gotta try to squeeze these reviews in, and my daughter's already calling me, saying there's a problem. <sighs> well, I'll be right back once again. Okay, once again, another fire is put out. She wasn't pressing the right button, so she couldn't make the go-kart go. And that is the end of the world to a three-year-old girl. So yes, I like the ease of use. Um, and you'll see in the pictures and stuff that the screens are a little bit different. Uh, right out of the box, they look um, a little bit... Come on now. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing. You know, a little bit different from each other. This one's a lot darker. That one's a lot clearer. This one. But the button and the, well, the fire button and the other two buttons are identical, which I'm a huge fan of. And uh, but this one seems to be a little shinier. Of course, it's newer. It's supposed to be kind of the same material as the last one, but you also see the etches are a lot different. Now, when you see them in pictures, it looks pretty cool. And it may even look pretty cool, you know, just seeing it right here. But when I, it's a little different when you're actually... <clears throat> when you actually are seeing it yourself. At first I thought, you know, this is kind of cheesy. I don't know if I like the looks of it, but the grip, and, and I think every reviewer has mentioned with the old one, it was kind of slidey, um, which wasn't too big of a deal, you know, but you know, certain other devices that have more of a matte type of a finish that's not so shiny, they do have better grip, but you know, I didn't have too much problems, you know, hanging on to it. But yeah, it's a little slidey compared to other devices. Where this somewhat, to me personally, can look cheesy, they, the, it's like they're, the etches are like sharp, but you can't cut yourself on it. I've tried. You would almost think you could, because they're that sharp, but they, I have pressed as hard as I can and really slid my finger along there, which nobody's ever going to do anyway, but just to see if it could be done, and I can't cut myself. So it's you never have to worry about anything like that. But because it's because they're so sharp, the grip, it's like they listened to all the users' reviews and fixed every little problem. And the slidiness is no longer an issue. It does look cool. It, grows on, it grew on me really quick because the grip is like, there is no way this thing's slipping out of your hand. I have never held a device that gripped like this does. It's the best grip I have ever felt. And uh, yeah, it's cool. The fire button, like I say, all it's ever going to do is fire or turn the device on and off by a five-click standard, you know, on-off. 
will come with another tube, and you're going to see in pictures uh, everything taken apart and, 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 and stuff like that. And uh, you can stack batteries. You can use, use the 18650, or you can use one 18350 by simply taking off. Where are you? Because everything looks hard to figure it out. You just got to start spinning. And the threads are all really nice on this. The battery cap, in my opinion, is a nicer thread. Cameron, could you please go? Let me do this. Anyway, he wants to be on camera. What little kid doesn't want to be on camera? I understand. So I've taken the battery out, taken it apart, you know, and uh, what you do is you just simply place this aside. If you want to go to just a, a small 18350 configuration, take your extender tube or whatever, your extra tube that came with it, screw that on, and where did I put the battery cap, man? Is it on this? Yes. Take your battery cap off the old one. Drop your 18350 in. Screw it on. And now you have a nice little compact uh, device. Here it is next to an Ego Twist. Uh, an Ego Twist, it's a thousand milliamp, is actually bigger. Um, here's more next to, a, to an actual standard Ego. And my son's handing me tanks, trying to be helpful. Here it is more next to an ego, just a basic ego. Not too much, you know, eh, it's taller, but whatever. I mean, that's a really compact bait there. And uh, well, let's screw on this. Uh, I go L. Looks pretty nice, you know, whatever. Oh, I got to turn it on. One, two, three, four, five. System is on. Just like the last VAMO, say you turn it on the same way. We're not talking about differences yet. We're just talking about commonalities. I'm going to crank that up. Mm. Hey, you know, and you got a nice little compact vape. You know, if I put two hands on it, it's covered and then some. So that's cool and it performs. Let me just really crank it up, see how it does with that little battery. Hmm. That is just awesome. I mean, that was a hot vape out of a rebuildable atomizer using microcoils. That's something we're going to talk about in another video. Now, <clears throat> and you saw how easy it was to adjust that up and down. That's what I love, using these two buttons, two little buttons, how nice it is to just up, down, up, down, up, down. It's that simple. There's no... Daddy. Oh. All right, my daughter is here again. I will be back. Here we are again. I And I've decided now I'm not going to edit this video whatsoever. I'm not going to edit out all the stuff of the kids coming in. Because who knows, there might be some single people out there or just people in relationships that are like, what do you think, honey? Should we have children? Oh, I don't know, Audrey. Um, what do you think? Well, maybe this will help you, you know. It's it's a whole other world. Your kids take priority and precedence over everything. And they should, you know, just the way it is. You just it's all part of parenthood. You just get through it and then okay, you take breaks, you take care of what they need, and then back to the review. Anyway, so yeah, I like being able to up down, up down my voltage. As simple as that. There's no okay, let me get into my screen, let me find my voltage setting, let me wait for it to lock in, let me do this, let me do that. It's just boom, done. I like that because I'm constantly adjusting my voltage up and down. And my daughter is back again. I'll be right. Well, maybe my son's gonna help her. Okay, my son says he's going to try and help her because he doesn't want to see me get interrupted anymore. He's such a sweet child. Differences. Let's talk about differences. I want to go ahead and just quickly get back to my 18650 just just so, I don't know, because I've got my original VAMO in 18650 mode right now. And so let's do that just, I don't know, so they're the same, if that makes sense to you. Just putting on the uh, other tube again. My battery cap. Screw it off the old one. Really nice threads on this battery cap. I gotta say, I like it better. And the spring, that's something that was an issue with the original BAMO. Um, the spring is nice. I mean, it's very, you know, very out there. And, uh, I mean, boom, it's already making contact. And, uh, 
you'll use the same two for your two battery configuration, your two 18350s or the one. And it's just, the threads are really nice. Um, very nice. Just very nice. And here we go. Let's start talking about the differences. First off, as I'm knocking over devices, like I always do, do you guys have that problem where you set them down and you're constantly knocking them over? I do all the time. I Maybe... Maybe we got to lay them down on their side from now on, you know? I mean, yeah, tanks will get flooded. At least you're not constantly knocking them over and beating up your devices, and eventually the electronics fail, and they're not firing the way they should, blah, blah, blah. Differences. Here we go. Ollie's getting off track. Stay on task, Jeffrey, as my teachers would always tell me. Kanger T2, which I love. I love my Kanger T2 tanks. Um, let's go with this one it's full. Kanger T2 with some triple five from Backwoods Brew. Let's say, you know, and remember we're, we're back to the version 2, doesn't have all the cool little edgy lines. I want to put this on there. Oh, but wait, it won't even fit. Oh, wait a minute, I jammed it in. I was able to jam it in. Well, let's see if it screws in, huh? Huh? It's screwing in. Oh, wow. Okay, it's gonna work, man. We're getting it screwed in there. I think it's screwing in. Is it screwing in? Is it starting? Yeah, uh, no, I guess it's not. However, I have gotten this to screw in. I got it to screw in on the original Vamos. But the problem is, you go to take a draw, there is no draw. There is absolutely zero airflow. Nothing. So then you're using an Ego to 510 adapter. Okay, fine. I don't mind that, but for a big device, a tall device that's already exceptionally tall, exceptionally big, now you've added even more length to an already extra tall tank, you just have this massive device, it's tough to put in your pocket, and uh, stuff like that. But it does work. So you get the new one, the V3. And I'll have pictures of this drip oil. Look how wide that sucker is. And guess what? It will take any tank, any 510, any Ego. There is way more than enough room. And, oh, i got to turn this one on, don't I? It's on. What's my power at? I better crank that down because on this tank, like I say, that's why I like my, my power buttons being the way they are because I can so easily bring it down. My Igo L, I have at 11 watts. These Kanger T2s, I tend to have at 7 to 7.5 watts. So I'm that quick, I'm already down and I'm vaping. And there is a nice drip well. This has a great drip well. A lot of reviewers, I see that, and I always kind of smile at it, because I always kind of like went, well, I don't really care about that. Well, it's got a nice drip well. Look at that drip well. Wow. So if you're a dripper, by gosh, and you get juice down in there, yeah, it's going to capture your juice. Here's my problem with drip wells, whether it be a Sigeli Z-Max, whether it be the other Vamo, um, or any other device. Where's my eye taste? Well, whatever. Sure, you have drip wells. That's great. But you know what? The juice gets down inside of there, and I can't clean it out because I'm like trying to wad up paper towels and try to clean that out. And to me, I that's where I liked the mechanical mod idea of the uh, the Smoke Tech. I can't remember what it's called all of a sudden. The X-Men thing. The X-Men thing. What is it called? The Smoke Tech. Mechanical. The Smoke Tech. You're all yelling it at the screen right now, aren't you? Well, it's no big deal. Look at that. No drip well. I actually like that. Why? Because if juice gets on it, you just wipe it off, and it's as simple as that. Now, here's another difference between the Vamo V3 and the V2. Let's say you get a bunch of juice down in there. Okay, you're loving your drip well. My God, thank God I got a drip well because it's captured all my juice. But can I clean it? <laughs> Look at that. It comes off. This is not the first device to do this, I know. But it's an affordable device, maybe the first really affordable, cheap device mod that does this. And I love that. Look at that. And boom, you wipe it all off, and you're done. Screw it back on when you're done. And I, I love it. Absolutely love it. 
and yeah, I can screw any tank on here. I'm a big fan these days of the eagle type threading because it's a lot beefier of a of a of a thread, you know, than that little, you know, five ten that's on the end of a um, of a uh, Vivinova. I find that if I stick a Vivinova on this thing, and I I always like to put it in my pocket as you're doing your awkward ballerina gymnastic type bends from time to time you'll screw up the threads on the Vivinova, which can screw up the threads in your Vamo. And some people have complained about the threads being uh, a little soft in the Vamo to begin with, and you can mess them up. I haven't had too much problems with that, but I always try to take good care of my threads. And that being said, I want to see, I was trying to figure out if there was a big difference between the version 2 and version 3 threads. And, you know, I don't know. It looks pretty identical to me. You do have four channels of uh, you know airflow like the original Vamo coming off your 510 connection, little notches. You'll see that in the pictures. Uh, so the airflow, you can screw things right down flush to it. You're not going to have a problem. Um, it looks pretty good with about anything that I screw onto it. Um, let me get that started. Let's see, this is one I probably screwed the threads up on by putting it in my pocket and leaving it attached. Therefore, Anytime I've got a Vivinova, I usually just take it off the device before I put it in my pocket. You know, looks good, whatever. I mean, you know. Yeah, it's working. Oh, yeah, I gotta crank this up, see? And that's simple. And I'm already there. Whereas, say the Z Max, all your Z Maxes with the OLED screen. You know, I'd have to click that three times, wait for it, and then start scrolling through, wait for it, and then adjust it up and down. And, and uh, But yet, I do love the OLED, OLED, whatever you call it, screen. My daughter's back. Um, so I'm going to cut it again. I'll be right back. I don't really remember what I was talking about now, but I'm trying to think. Okay, I do love the OLED screen as opposed to you know, the VAMO screen, the typical, you know, whatever sort of setup scenario um, as far as the looks of it. And that is another difference between the version 2 and the version 3. <clears throat> Watch this. And in fact, I think what we should probably do with this at this point is a close-up sort of a view. So let's do that. Let's do a close-up view and we'll change camera angles a little bit just to make life a little easier. Yes, you have OLED with the new VAMO, but it like equates all of the simplicity of cranking things up and down, like I love and many people love about the VAMO, into the OLED screen. So let's get to that right now. And here we are, the VAMO in all of its wonderful beauty. You see the, the famous VAMO fire button, the two little buttons, nice metal, rugged. Uh, here's a more real-time view of your top cap and your uh, 510 connection slash ego connection. Nice and open. You can put anything into that. Um, you know, and you've got these little grooves around the top cap, as you can see. You know, whatever. Kind of a Pravari look. Whatever. And uh, your cool, smoky OLED screen. And, uh, you know, if each button does kind of its own thing as you're playing around. First of all, you hold one down just like the version 2. Tells you we got 4.1 volts of battery left. Okay, hold down the other one because I have nothing attached to this. 9.9 .9 ohm, and that's how quickly and simply you can get to your ohm of whatever device you're using. I love that. And you know, if you're building a lot of uh, rebuildable atomizers, you know, you're trying to constantly check your ohms of what device. It's so easy to screw onto here and. And you're done. This will fire, according to the instructions, 1.5 ohms and up. Personally, I have stuck on here uh, 1.3 ohm stuff, and it fired it. But I don't really have a really good, you know, ohm tester. So you know, certain devices will say, "Well, it's 1.3," and other devices, "No, nah, it's 1.4." Whatever. You hold both buttons down, okay? and that will get you into the start of things. Um, the left button, as you're facing the VAMO, the left button will change whatever setting you're in immediately. The minute you hit it, it's right there. There's no waiting around. I've just switched it to voltage. Now hold them both down. 
press the other button and that will scroll through. So what and you only have three options with this particular OLED display. And you've got power or uh, wattage, you've got uh, LCD display, and you've got LCD on and off. So if I wanted to turn that LCD on, now it's on. It was off. I just hit the other button and boom, it's on. Well, what do I want my LED to display? Just like, you know, any other uh, OLED, um, we'll hit the other button. I want it to display resistance. You know, so at that point, let that lock in. The resistance one always takes forever. Whatever you're firing, the minute you hit that fire button, it's going to flash up the resistance at you. Say you wanted it to, um, you know, display something else, though. Dang it. Let's see here. You know, so if you accidentally get into something, oh, I wasn't trying to get into that. I was trying to get into something else. Just hit the other button and it'll keep scrolling through, see? It's, which is kind of nice. But okay, so I want this to display not resistance. I want it to display my battery voltage. Okay, no problem. Wait, let it lock in. Now every time you fire it, it's telling you what your battery to voltage is. Hold them both down. And uh, see, I accidentally went into into that mode. I didn't even want it. Well, okay, I want it in power, and I'll hit the other one and scroll through. LCD display. I don't even want my LCD on. I want it off. Simple as that. It's really easy. That's what I love about the VAMO is how easy it is to, you know, go through your menus. Got a hole for nice venting so you don't have to worry about your battery gases, which is uh, an important thing in any mod. And uh, so that's kind of it of your close-up of how you get through the screens. It's really that simple. Uh, that's what the VAMO is simple for, is it is just easy. It is always so easy and quick to adjust anything, and, and, and it just works fantastical. I like that word, fantastical. All right, now we'll go back to a normal view. Yeah, so, you know, whatever. That's, that's it in a nutshell. I'm just adjust, readjusting my wattage. Mm -mm -mm. Vamo did it, man. They really have created with the version 3 a great device. No rattly, no whatsoever as I shake it, shake it, and it it's just great, man. I I can put any device, any device you got, you're going to be able to, you know, attach it. There is nothing you cannot do with this thing, you know, uh, unless you're going to fire some Lultra, Lultra? ultra low ohm stuff um, you know obviously it's protected built-in protection so it's not going to fire it and you know what that's okay we have micro coils now which are, like I said I'm gonna do in another video you don't need ultra low ohms anymore you know uh, and that way you're not playing with your high battery drain and taking the risk of something blowing up in your face and uh, as another user pointed out to me, and uh, that's something else we're going to discuss in another video too, when we're going to talk about batteries and and you know battery configurations and and try to get it in into as much of plain English as we can when it comes to using mechanical devices and these low low why do I always say ultra ultra low ohms and the dangers and the hazards potentially that there are with it and it's something that needs to be talked about I said in another video that it, that's Phil's job and uh, this uh, user came on and said no it's not Phil's job you know and, and he was right uh, it's something that I think we need to discuss and I'll try to make it really easy to follow and I've been doing my research and studying so I can have the right information but one thing for sure, venting is very important. Make sure your device has it. I didn't say it in my video to Smoke Tech Magneto. It doesn't look like there's, that's the wrong side. It doesn't look like there's venting on there, but there is. You take the, if you take this cap off, it actually vents through the back, uh, the, the fire button. You can see right here, there's four. Well, yeah, see the four holes there? Each side's got it, it does vent. So make sure, you know, they're just a little quick, you know, getting into it. That's your first important thing. The other thing is a battery charger. Make sure you're using good battery chargers. Some people say to always take the battery out of your device. But that's another nice thing about using these, you know, variable voltage, variable wattage, protected mods, you know, protected batteries inside, vented. It, it's nice, you know. It's just a great mod. I love it. Um, if you're a fan of the other VAMO, you're going to love this one because you get the OLED screen, which is cool, and uh, it looks better. 
And uh, there's really not else, you know, nothing else to really say, I guess. I think I've covered about everything. Um, but yeah, thank you for putting up with my interruptions, you know, from the kids and stuff. And like I always say, that's why it's tough for me to really fire out these videos on top of there's just not a lot of, you know, real, you know, new stuff coming out that's really breaking any barriers, you know, and, and stuff like that, that that really interests me and stuff like that uh, for ease of use and uh, and for price affordability. But the VAMO version 3 certainly is, and I'm loving it. So, yeah, if you like the version 2, check out the version 3. It'll take all your Kinger T2s, T3s, all your Ego stuff uh, that was a problem before where you needed an adapter. And uh, that's all there is to say about that, man. Till then, remember one thing, all you need is love, okay? It's the truth. We're so quick to get angry. Always be willing to step into the other person's shoes. When they come at you, it is our human nature and instinct to immediately be on the offense if somebody comes at you kind of, you know, with anger. Um, and that's something I've been working on myself lately. No matter who yells at me or who, you know, which doesn't happen often, well, it doesn't really to any of us, but they come at you and your first, you know, reaction is to come right back with anger. But don't. Take a deep breath and think about it and put yourself in their shoes for a second. Try to live it through their eyes and maybe you can understand where they're coming from and then you can be the bigger person and, you know, can maybe bring the conversation to more of just that, a conversation, and you can work out the problem. Uh, something I kind of recently stumbled onto and I thought I'd share with you, you know, because it's, it's always good, I think, to try to strive to be a better person. I know I always do. And uh, anyway, some weird noise outside. My son must be out there. Let's take a vape, everybody. Love you, everyone. Here we go. Oh, yeah. That wasn't very good. Let's do another one. And that's a good vape. Love you. I'm glad I got to see you again. And I'm glad you got to see me again. And now I get to edit all this stuff and throw pictures out and all this stuff. And it's going to take forever. But that's okay. It's kind of cool. Um, everybody have a great week. Any holidays coming up? Mm, the next one is October. Hopefully I'll be back before then. That's about it. Um, so until then, I'll just see you then.